You're locked into Inception Radio Network, Superior, Wisconsin. Now your host of California MUFON Radio, Lorian Fenton. Welcome everyone to the California MUFON Radio Show. I'm your host, Lorian Fenton, speaking to you today on my landline because Skype isn't working yet. I don't know what's going on, folks. I'm having this, you know, it's been an issue, I don't know, for the last couple of months. Every time I turn off my computer, it's updating and updating and updating, and I'm sitting here and it says... It's spinning away, and it says, do not power off or unplug your machine, installing three of 28 updates. And it's been doing that for over 20 minutes now. <laughs> so I'm really apologizing to everyone for being um, on the phone. I hope it, the, the sound quality is tolerable. And on a break, hopefully if my computer does uh, ever catch up on its updates tonight, I'll be back on Skype and everything should be well. So I hope everyone's doing very, very good. Um, I've had an interesting week, and I, boy, I don't know what to say about it. It's just been interesting. I, I, you know, I'm going through again, and I'm being very honest with all you guys out there. I'm going through another uh, wrenching of my beliefs. And I don't even know what to do about it. I've just been this whole last week, I've just been feeling like I should get out of the whole UFO community and just not do this anymore. And I'm just having another one of those places where I'm starting to wonder if this planet is truly ready to accept what the biggest mystery on this planet is all about. And that is other dimensional being contact which which really equates to religious beliefs, a government beliefs, political beliefs, everything else that goes on on this planet, you know, from the time you wake up until you go to bed at night, really evolves around this question and or this conundrum or this whatever it is that we all seek in the UFO community that other people seek in the consciousness community that people speak you know seek in the yoga and the meditative communities and people seek when they're at ashrams and people seek when they go to church i mean it's all the same ball of wax and the problem i'm having with it all is i'm starting to hide in my house a lot more than i used to the only time i go out in public and have to deal with the public is when i'm doing uh, a conference or going out in public to to talk about MUFON or Inception Radio Network or the radio shows I'm on. And the hard part for me is I don't see the mass majority of the people out there actually awakening to what is going on. They're still caught in dogma. They're still caught in theology. They're still caught in, oh, just a lot of strange beliefs that have nothing to do with my worldly views and paradigms. And it's getting harder and harder for me to even address normal people. And, you know, I I love mankind, I love humanity, but we're really at a precipice here with just the, the matrix that's keeping us all suppressed with all the daily things we have to do just to survive. And it shouldn't be this way, folks. It's 2015. What are we doing here? It's just, you know, I can't even describe to you how discouraging it is for me to go to work every (laughs) every day and look around me and just go, what the heck happened? I thought by now people would be aware. At 13 years old, I'm reading Be Here Now by Baba Ram Dass, you know, Richard Alpert, and I'm – 
And I, he was my hero for so many years, folks. And I finally moved to Marin County, California and met him. And he was everything I thought he would be. He was amazing. And he lived what he preached. He did what he did. I think he's still alive. I think he moved to India. I'm not sure. Or maybe Hawaii. <laughs> Somewhere over there. Anyhow, amazing guy. And I thought to myself, boy, if I could do that the rest of my life, that's, that is what I want to do. I just want to love. I just want to be around people and care about people. And 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 I thought everybody wanted that. And so my problem here, folks, is I sit here on a daily basis and I watch people. They're so cutthroat and backstabbing and uh, I have a really hard time with it. And maybe it's just that I don't have uh, any friends in the business except for that I see at the conferences. And my good friend who's on the show with me tonight, and that's Plutronus, and I get to call them once or twice a month and, and you know, have a good cry. <laughs> and actually, it's not a cry. It's more of a cathartic uh, communication is what we have. But, you know, it just, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just going through an, another wrenching week of, like, God, why can't people wake up to this? You know, why does it have to entail religion? Why does it have to be the devil? Why can't it just be one of six million different aliens? Why can't it be angels? You know, why can't it be God? You know, why does it have to be defined? Why can't we just all accept it for what it is, that it's an amazing experience? We all have to go through it. We go through it when we die. Death is actually the ultimate goal here, folks. And I think the ultimate goal out of that is that we have to be not afraid to die, and we have to be ready for it, and we have to be prepared. I think we create what we get on the other side. You know, our consciousness is the key. And anyhow, I'm just, I'm having one of those weeks. So you guys, I'm sorry to put you through this <laughs> for the first 10 minutes of the show tonight. But I just wanted you all to know that I'm just having one of those weeks. And I had to tell you all this. And it's just, you know, to let you know. But I'm feeling a lot stronger tonight. Now that Tron's on the phone with me this evening, I think I'll be okay and, uh, yeah, if I can just get my computer to boot up, I think that started it. And it got me to the point where I was like, you know, even the computer won't cooperate with me this week. It just doesn't understand. So, yeah, so there we are. Okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to mention was just how I'm feeling this week. I wanted to give you guys an update because I don't do that too often, but there it is. Okay, so that's the personal update. Now, uh, as far as what I'm producing in the UFO community, I have a conference coming up that I was actually going to pull the plug on this week as well, but I'm not. It's called the Experiencer Event. It'll be in Sacramento, California. It'll be on October 24th and 25th, and Barbara Lamb will be there. And I, gosh, you know, I can't get into the computer, so I can't give you the list of people because I don't have it on paper. But uh, a lot of people will be there. Bar uh, Barbara Lamb, Lori McDonald, who's a hypnotherapist in Sacramento. She's wonderful, by the way. And I'm just trying to think who else is going to be there that I've actually, uh, that is committed. Oh, Dr. Um, Michael Carter, Reverend Michael Carter is going to be there. He's already agreed. Uh, I have so many people. It's going to be so interesting. It is an experiencer event, and I say that very, very, uh, I mean it, folks. That's what it is. It's the only people speaking at this event will be experiencers. So it's going to be quite an extraordinary event. I highly recommend that you're there if you can be there. It's in, it'll be, like I said, in Sacramento, California on October 24th and 25th. You can find out about it at ufocon2015.com. That's ufocon2015.com. There's just a little blurb up there about it now, but within the next week or so, tickets will be going on sale and the whole bit. So that'll be fun. Now, what's going to happen before my conference, though, that I need to tell everybody about that's super cool, is that MUFON is having their big symposium, and I believe the website is mufonsymposium.com. And if I'm wrong, folks, I'm very sorry because I don't have a computer on in front of me right now. Oh, look, installing update 17 of 28. We're actually making progress. So hopefully I'll get to the computer on the first break here for tonight. 
so anyhow, I think it's uh, MUFONSymposium.com. Don't quote me on that, but do go to MUFON.com and check it out because they have the link directly over there. And one of my favorite people is going to be presenting at the MUFON Symposium this year. I didn't know until last week, and that's Preston Dennett. And he's just an amazing guy. He's been on the show before. He's also appeared at my last UFO conference. Which, by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this because you know there's never a better time to plug something than when you need to. <laughs> okay, here it is, folks. You can always help me out by going to ufocon2015.com and pressing on the on demand watch the video on demand button and purchasing the on demand of the last conference we held on March 28th and 29th. And I will give you a code right now to get a percentage off. I think it's 40 for 45 days. And with this code, it's down to about 20 some odd dollars for 45 days. And that is UFOC15. And those are all capital letters. That's capital U, capital uh, F, capital O, capital C, and the number's 1-5. That's UFOC 1-5. And that will get you a discount on that. So I do hope you watch it because if you do, you'll be watching it and you'll be seeing my guest this evening. So without further ado, let me bring him on. Platronus, are you there? Hi there. I know I know you're looking for that mute button, right? Yeah, yeah. I just I don't actually hang on it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, dear. Well, you know, I'm having a conundrum of a week, and I really need you to help me out. I'm having one of those weeks where I'm thinking I had to quit everything. What do you think? No. Nope. I don't nope. think you should quit. <laughs> no, I think you do a good job. It's pretty funny. It's pretty easy, Everybody goes right? through you low know? cycles. Everybody goes through low well, cycles. Well, you know... I know that, and I know you've been up and down and up and down over the years, too, because, you know, we've all talked about all of our experiences, you know, and it's not just you and me, it's everybody. Everybody that I have on this radio show, everybody that listens to my radio show, everybody that's seen a UFO, everybody that's had an experience goes through states like this, because, you know, uh, I mean, let's face it, our, first of all, sometimes our families won't ever talk to us again. I mean, that's half the battle right there is when you start talking to people about what's happened to you, they turn on you, you know? Yep. Have you ever had that experience? Oh, well, you know, I've always been at odds with my family. <laughs> my dad didn't like me flat out. You know, he didn't like Pisces, and I was a Pisces. Uh, not that he expressed it that way, but it turned out that three members of my family are Pisces, and he didn't like any one of us. But the uh, Virgo and the um, and the Scorpio, he he, he loved them. Oh, there he was tight with them. But um, the um, well, did your dad ever have experiences? I know your mom did. Did your dad ever have any? Um. It, well, as far as I know. Dad wasn't too spiritual. Yeah, you know, he was, Dad was, uh, I don't know how to put this, you know, being the direct descendant of the royal family of Germany, uh, so much so that when he stayed in Germany, when he was stationed in, 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 in Augsburg, Germany, and the German government found out, they would uh, frequently put him up in the, in the palace out of respect for uh, his relationship with the royal family. And the point I'm making here is that Dad was a, I don't know how else to put it, he was a stud. He was a stud animal. And, um, oh, in other Dad, words, he wasn't too, he, he was more of a party guy. Uh, he was very, uh, you know, he had, uh, he had Moon Venus in Aquarius. I, I don't, and, you know, in the 10th house, you can't get much more <laughs> party guy than that. And uh, he, uh, he loved to party, he loved, loved, party and he loved drinking and one time it wasn't too long it wasn't too long before he passed away he's here at my house and we were throwing a great big luau party here at the house and, and i mean it was my stepdaughters and my girlfriend and 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 uh, my friends and we, we probably had five six hundred people here i'm not i'm not kidding it was a lot of people and there was all these girls running around in these little little grass skirts and stuff. We're talking about young, you know, 20, 25-year-old girls running around all the place. 
and dad's sitting there he's great he's got himself a chair looking out through a window at the at the at this long potluck table he was grazing as i would call it and he's looking out the window watching all the girls dancing on the doing the karaoke in the backyard on the dance pad and uh, I walked in and I said, Dad, what you doing? He says, oh, I'm just watching the, the entertainment here. And I, <laughs> we got to talking. One of the few times he ever spoke to me. I mean, we really weren't, weren't on very good terms. And he told me, he says, son, pardon my expression the way he puts this. He says, when my wiener stops working, what's there to live for? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's exactly uh, okay. what he said. And, that was pretty blunt. <laughs> and And when... <laughs> Six months later, when it stopped working, he died. It was incredible. Well, you know, now that's interesting. You know, I know people are listening to this and they're going, what the heck are these two talking about this for? But, uh, you know, this is intriguing to me because you come from a woman that was being abducted all the time and yes. a guy that is royal lineage. And he had absolutely, it's obvious that partying, drinking, and sex and rock and roll were just much more important to him than uh, spirituality. That's exactly right. Do you think at all during his lifetime he had any experiences at all? Because it sounds like he didn't. It sounds like this, all all of your experiences and all of your profound uh, inspirations around the whole UFO community and your contact with the greys and, and other beings maybe only because of your mother, period. What are you thinking on that? Well, that's a, you know, that's a good question. And it's, and, and it's, a, it's one that has, in my opinion, multiple answers uh, in order to answer it. And, um, but basically, uh, just back up for a paraphrase for a minute here, is the fact that it, Taught by the Rosicrucians, which are a, a mystical organization that te- it's a it's an ascension school, and uh, teaches mystical ascension. It's been deemed devil worshiping by the church for you know centuries, and part of the reason why the Masons and the Rosicrucians are secret, contrary to what that babbler Icky has to say, and his followers, uh, clueless followers are that the reason why they were secret is not because they were roasting babies, but was because the because the Catholic Church and the powers that be uh, persecuted us. Just that simple. That's why you're secret. Uh, you know, we operated all during the time that uh, Hitler Germany was operating in Germany. They were secret over there, too, for the same reasons, uh, because of, you know, being persecuted. Everybody was operating in secret under, under Hitler. They had to be. You either had to belong to his his uh, school of thinking, or or you're a heretic, and he put you in the death camps. Well, that's essentially what the right, church right, was doing to absolutely. us. They they uh, they would torture confessions out of us, and then uh, burn us at the stake for it. Okay. Oh yeah, well, we were know, comforting with the enemy. Anyway, so the point I'm making okay, here now, is that. Hold- yeah, just before you go on with that, um, just one quick uh, interjection. Um, so the Rosicrucians were being equated with, like, witchcraft and that type Absolutely. of thing? Is that what you're saying? Okay, yes. gotcha. I Absolutely. just want to make sure I'm on the right track here. Witchcraft, okay. same difference, okay, in the Catholic Church mind. And most Christians' minds, because most people don't realize that the Christianity, as we understand it today in America, uh, originated— and evolved out of the Catholic mindset. All Christianity does. All, Amer- all, all American Christianity, all Western world Christianity, evolved out of the Catholic Church mindset. And they were completely against anything to do with devil worshiping, or devil uh, cavorting with the devil, or studying the Kabbalah, or studying uh, um, a Hebrew. Uh, and there may have been good reasons for it initially, which are not obvious. Uh, to anybody that hasn't studied the subject for a while, and I won't get into those aspects, but the ignorant always sees the bad in anything. Look at Hollywood. You know, the people talking about genetic engineering, Hollywood turns it into something evil. It's, you know, super soldiers. It's uh, grotesque monsters eating people's brains. I mean, instead of seeing the fact that Someday somebody will have a, a cancer and they'll have to cut a limb off, and you can take a pill and grow that limb back in a couple of weeks. 
Now, that's what genetic mm-hmm. engineering is really going to do for us. Genetic engineering is going I to enhance so. us. It will enhance our thinking. It will, uh, I foresee a time when you'll be able to walk into a, into a say, you want to go, I used this line before in conferences, uh, you go into a pharmacy and you've got a hot date coming up on a weekend. And you're short and, and you've got a big fat nose. <laughs> and you go up and you put your credit card inside of a machine. It takes it scans your face with a laser, get a topographical map of your of your face and type in your actual weight and you stand on a scale and pops in your weight and stuff. And then you go through a series of pictures and you literally create the person you want to look like for the weekend. And you punch well, and you okay, put now in your I credit have to card. Interject. Yeah, I've got to interject, and I think you're absolutely right. And this is directly out of the Twilight Zone uh, feature. Oh, this is on. This is coming. This technology. Oh yeah, and I hope it does. To be honest with you, I'm not talking about teleporter stuff. Twilight Zone. No, no, no. I understand completely. What I wanted to bring up was there's an an episode of the Twilight Zone where a young girl is turning 16, and she has to pick one of the 25 body models to be. And oh, really? she doesn't want to go through the transformation. Oh, yeah. And there's only 25 men, 25 women bodies or something. Or 100, oh, well, you, you know, know I think I saw that four. years ago. Yeah, yeah. And for yeah. years, I was like, oh, good for her rebelling, you know, whatever. And now that I'm old, I'm like, yeah, what a great idea. <laughs> if we could all have the perfect bodies and we'd all be perfectly good looking and we'd have perfect health and, you know, hey, why not? Well, the yeah. way this would work, because the corporations wouldn't want you to have perfect, uh, perfect existence forever for for the for what you have in your bank account, they they're going to dole it out. So in order in oh, order to right, you know, they, oh, you know, it's like the common cold, man. You'd really on. I mean, look in the 1800s, uh, they cured polio, t- uh, typhoid. They invented penicillin. They invented the, the vast majority of the super drugs that we use today and take for granted was invented with 1800s technology. Yet today, when you go into when you've got a common cold and you go into the in the cold remedy aisle, what's in there besides 60 billion dollars worth of industry uh, candy lozenges? True. They don't want to cure the True. common cold. They don't want to cure the common cold right. because they're making sixty billion dollars by 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 putting a little uh, a little coating uh, inside of a candy lozenge. That's that's the U.S. government on the take. That's what's wrong with our government. Is our government just like Ronald Reagan said? The greatest threat to American democracy is the corporatization of the Congress, and that is exactly what has happened. All right. Jeez. Yeah. Anyway, you know, back, you're right. You know. Back to uh, back to the pills. So this. You just take the pill, and 30, 34 hours later, you're standing there, or you're tall, and you're, you know, you've got blue eyes instead of brown eyes, and your hair is blonde instead of being black, and you know, that day's coming. That's that's digital, and that's digital. But after after about two weeks, it'll revert back to what you were because Wrong they want. Right, unfortunately, that part's unfortunate. Anyway, the the point I was making about yes, can you hear me? Oh, I didn't. You dropped Testing. out for a second just on me, and it may be only me, and I can't tell because I don't have my computer's almost booted up, folks. So as soon don't as my computer it. boots up, you will up. Yeah, it's almost done. Don't and update then, it. Um, Microsoft is updating the what they call the framework. Update. Don't update. I hate I don't you know. Update. I had no choice. I had no choice. It automatically, I turned off my computer to reboot it for tonight's show, and it went into this insane thing of re-updating everything. So, so Well, there what you that go. means is I'm you've stuck. got a switch turned on. You have a switch someplace in your operating system turned on that does auto-updates. Turn that switch off. i got to find that switch. <laughs> it's in the policy section. <laughs> Policy. Okay, you'll have to help me with that. When we're okay. off the air later tonight, maybe you can show me where to go to turn everything okay, off. Okay, yeah, turn but off. But anyhow, the uh, I was just I was just going to tell everybody. It's I know it's past our first break time, but let's wait until my computer gets uh, rebooted, and then we'll take a break, and uh, I'll get back on Skype. So here we are. So anyhow, okay, you were so saying the point I was making. Uh, the about, government is yeah. The point go I was ahead. making about the about. Uh, the royal family and this is that there's in my opinion you've you've got the story basically correct the part that's missing is the fact that we are individual we reincarnate in cycles 
we reincarnate. Generally speaking, our, we reincarnate back into the planet. If you start, if, if you've evolved to the point where you're evolved, you've evolved into a human. You don't reincarnate as a dog. You don't come back as a bug or a cockroach. You come back as a human because that's that's the level you've achieved in consciousness. And the body form is commensurate with the intelligence form of your consciousness. If you incarnate, uh, but people generally do most of their karmic conditions within their own families. So the karmic conditions that you have to decrystallize in order to move on to the next stage is within your own family. So what happens is you, you are very likely uh, some one of your distant relatives. Uh, in my case, I remember uh, being <laughs> I remember being a woman two lifetimes ago. I remember being my great great grandmother. Uh -huh. Okay, for, well, that's and interesting. within my own life, and we reincarnate. Uh, it, we reincarnate both male and female within our generally within our own bloodlines, because, like I said, that's where the, most of the karmic conditions have been route, and what you. What you see, what you sow, is what you you know is what you what you reap, just straight out of the Bible. And so we reincarnate into our own cycles, into our own bloodlines, and so with that as an understanding, and we're our own separate individuals. Bloodline only has to do with the physical body form rather than the spiritual form. Uh, you may just as easily reincarnate into another into another bloodline. Uh, especially what what happens if your bloodline stops? In in my immediate family, only my only my brother and sister uh, have had children, and nobody knows where they went. Okay, I don't what? know where my sister is. How, how did I, they lose them? Oh, you well, lost your one was adopted and out. You lost. One was adopted oh. out. Okay, one was adopted out. Wow. And uh, I have no idea where my sister is. Uh, she, She's on social media, but I haven't been able to find her. And and realistically, this may sound terrible, but I'm not really interested to find her. We don't get along very well. Like I said, I don't get along well with my family members. We don't. We're not. We don't. Well, you know, and that brings me to my whole point at the beginning of this uh, conversation tonight with everybody is, you know, I'm I'm I guess I'm going through a little bit of a crisis with my family as well because I haven't spoken to one of my sisters for six years and. I feel bad because I have a nephew that I've never gotten to know. I just realized that he's in high school now. He's going to be a senior next year, and I've only talked to him like three times in his life. And I feel yeah. so bad. I feel like I'm, I've been shunned, and, and it's all over money, and it's all yep. over uh, my beliefs. Right. You know, as a, you know, I'm considered the crazy one in the family, and so, you know, I, apparently they don't want their children around me because I'm going to poison <laughs> them in some way. Yeah. You know, I'm just thinking, they want you know, those little robots to be anybody? robotic. Exactly. I mean, they're just so, you know, I, I, I don't, in, I don't even understand that. If I had, I loved my crazy uncle. I thought he was amazing, and he, without my crazy uncle, I would never have kept my mind open the way I have. Thank God for that. And maybe they realize that. Maybe they understand that having somebody who thinks differently than the rest of the pack can influence their children not to behave in the way they want them to. You know, I get that. Yeah. yeah. But anyhow, I just. You know, it's been a tough, tough road, and I gotta say, contact in the desert really took a lot out of me this year. Um, and I, I can't talk about all the things that happened to me there, but I can say this: I, it was not what I expected, and I will never go back again. Um, the big it, conferences it just, aren't fun, uh, man. They're costly, unless you're a total 100% newbie uh, in in ufology or etiology. The big conferences don't really offer anything uh, that's good because they're just basically rehashing the same stuff over and over and over again. Uh, it's all about money making because, you know, they're so big exactly. they have to make money just to st keep the doors open. And uh, like I said, the only the, the only the only real value in going is meeting the other people. Now, there is that is that does have a true value. But beyond that, that the conferences themselves aren't worth listening to. There. Yeah, I saw all my buddies there. I had a great time with them, but you know, I just I can see them any other time too. You know, I can throw my own conference and invite them all. 
<laughs> right, you know, right. that type of thing. So, yeah, so it, I don't know, it was just really hard on me. But you're absolutely right, you know, but it is. Like, we shouldn't discourage people from going to the conferences because I put them on, too, and, and I just think it's super important that everybody get to them as much as they can. But, you know, for me, this one was just, it really took a toll on me. That's all I got to say. Well, I heard it was a zoo. Yeah. I heard it from people that well, went. A friend of mine who is a, uh, uh, which I'm not at liberty to disclose his name, but but he's a he's a manager. He's a, he's a gov- he's a government manager. The only government manager I know that I don't think is a buffoon. Incidentally, he's a film critic, <laughs> an open theater critic. He's one of these people that goes to uh, stage plays and then writes uh, yeah. art about him. He's a very smart guy. He's a mathematician, one of the smartest guys I know. He went to the. He goes to all the conferences, and he came back and he says, "Oh, that was a terrible." He, basically, he thought it was a bad conference. He said it was. Uh, yeah. It was the scheduled speakers were talking about stuff, you know, mostly advertising their books and stuff at the conference. Uh, you know, one hundred percent commercial, and um, and and I don't want people to think that I'm just because I was jealous and because I didn't get invited to speak there or anything. But but I don't know if I'd want to speak at a conference like that because it's just it's like a cattle call. You know, they usher you in, they zap you, and saw you up into little pieces and put you out for sale. You know. <laughs> Yeah, where's the stun gun when we need it, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But back to the back well, to you the. Know, uh, I, in a, sticking up for a lot of my friends that were there hawking their books and their wares um, and speaking. There's nothing um, wrong with that. That's what got to make a living. Yeah, that's what they were there for. I mean, b- believe me, uh, and I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm going to. There are many people that come to that that speak that paid their own way to get there. Okay. Right. So um, they had to be selling their books. That was the only option they had. And I just found that abhorrible, you know, to be putting on a conference and expect your speakers to well, take care Well, one of, of the things that really torques me, one of the things that really torques me, and I'll never get invited on their show, not that I really want to be, is ancient aliens crowd. God, what a bunch of buffoons. <laughs> well, uh, Okay. <laughs> I can't say yay or nay at this point because I can get myself in big trouble. Yeah, but I but can't. I will say, <laughs> why do you feel that way, Tron? Well, you know, you only have to watch the show once to figure out that the ancient alien theorists are the show producers. And they're sitting around inside of a room and they, they got a map up on the wall and they throw a dart at it and that's what they talk about. And they throw another dart and if they're two red darts, they connect those two stories together. It's, it's, if you've ever watched anybody throwing darts that can't, no good at throwing darts, they have no control over where the darts go. So it's just, it's, uh, could it be possible that all the aliens are really porpoises and dolphins and they came here in spaceships that look like bottles 2,000 years ago? Is it possible? <laughs> Give me a break. God, it's it, just it really, garbage. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, and I'll be the <laughs> first to confess this to everyone. I don't watch Ancient Aliens. I watched the first season many years ago, and I liked it. It was okay, but it didn't do anything for me in my quest. So I didn't watch it anymore. It just, you know, I filed it in as yes, there were probably people here millions of years ago that created us, and and there were many other civilizations. I already knew that before I watched Ancient Aliens, so it wasn't like it was a big revelation. Yeah, read Zachariah to me. Sitchin. Exactly. I mean, I'd already done all that, so I was like, okay, this is cool. And then, uh, but what I did find from it that made me very happy was that my father one time told me a few years ago, he says, hey, have you ever seen this show called Ancient Aliens? And I said, I laughed. I said, oh, yeah. He goes, wow, don't you find it intriguing what they're talking about? And I said, yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? And he goes, like yes, I said, it is. Like I said, you have to be a complete newbie. This is who was going to those conferences. That's right. The complete newbies that go to those big conferences, they learn something, and that's okay in that sense. But for but for the exactly. people who are down in the trenches, who are reading all the books, who 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 read watch all the George Filer uh, sighting reports, 
who's a member of the UFO updates list, who hang out on the edge of reality bulletin boards or the Open Minds Forum or, or the Outpost or any of the good BBSs, the above top secret bulletin boards, these people know what's going on. They don't need to go to those conferences because they know more than what the speakers are talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and it really and ancient and I, and aliens I don't. This is, yeah, go ahead. You well, know, the ancient aliens show, which I, I don't need to bad mouth them. I'm not trying to bad mouth them. It's just I, you know, I'm an engineer, and it's got to work. I, I use physics to make my stuff work. And while it's true that sitting around talking about mysticism is like on the, it's on the edge. There is actually a scientific basis for mysticism. There's a scientific basis, and and there's a growing scientific community out there that is studying how telepathy works, and they're modeling it mathematically today. Ancient aliens ain't based on any of that. They just they just throwing oh. out total speculation, presenting it as though it's true. By claiming ancient alien theorists, whoever the hell those are, they never name them. They never identify any of those guys. They always cover the, you know, it's called CYA, cover your your foot. And <laughs> then they pop up a, a series of people uh, as as they, they interview people and get their opinions right after they say ancient alien theorists. Well, it, the audience sees these people that are being interviewed. And thinking that those are the ancient alien theorists, but they're not. These people are generally uh, experts in their field, but that doesn't mean that they agree with, with what the show's producers are saying. It's just hacked together, right. dubbed right. together with an editing machine to, to make the pieces fit and make it into a, into a show so they can get their next sponsor uh, time slot on, the, on, the, uh, on, on cable television. You know, as far as I can tell... Well, some of the information they present is pretty good and it's interesting. Uh, not everything that's ancient came from aliens. Okay? And if you listen right, to ancient aliens, right. everything does. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I understand, and I, 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 I thank you for that because it, it needs to be said at some point. Even though I was standing straight across from Giorgio and his lovely wife, and we were putting fake hair on one of our alien dolls and, and shaking it at him from a distance and having a great time with him. I love him. his outfit, man. I love that guy's. I mean, the first time I saw his hair, he looks like he's sitting out in the oh, sun a lot. Yes. He's overbaked. He looks like he's been in the oven too long. And, and his hair is all going every which way. I, I mean, the guy looks like he's out there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he is he's a very nice guy in spite of it I'm all. Sure but, he is. Know, the, again, the problem is here's a guy making tons of money at these conferences Maybe. and then you got somebody like, you know, my good friend uh I'm not, well, I'm not going to say. I got a couple of good friends sitting there hawking their books and they're hardly getting any attention at all and they're miraculous people that have had amazing encounters. And they have a great message to give to humanity. And then Giorgio standing there with his hair, and he's getting ten times the attention and ten times. Well, the you money. know, we don't know yeah. his story. I mean, you, you, listen, uh, unless he was born like Bill Gates into a rich family, uh, you know, born into wealth. Uh, if we knew the truth, we'd probably find that Giorgio has walked a tough road to get to where he is. He probably has, yeah. And he deserves what he's gotten. I'm just saying I, I wish there was more, I guess what I'm trying to say, is I wish there was more equality at these conferences for the different speakers, you know, so that yeah, they yeah. all were treated equal. That's what I do at my conferences, as you know. Everybody's treated the same. Everybody's paid nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got, has nothing in abundance, and uh, but you all are taken care of to the best of my ability. You know, I I make sure you can get there, that you got a place to stay, I can feed you. I try. Yeah, to I had a great time, and the food was sure. good. And the food was good. See, there you go. So I did. So I had a great time. The point to it is, I don't treat any of you any different. One of you could be a great star, and the next one could be no, no one's ever heard of you before, but you get treated equally, and I think that's very important. Well, you, know, you took a I chance on that, me, and and uh, and it turned out pretty good. And although I have I have done a couple lectures at various MUFON chapters around California, um, and I've been on a bunch of radio shows over the years, and I was uh, featured on the Discovery Channel, uh, what back in '98 or '99, and also in 2001. 
they did a six 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 week uh, series on me concerning my uh, live contact experiments uh, back when I was wow. really wired. I was really wired back then, and that was before the attacks began. And now I've toned down a way down because you know I don't want to. I don't want. I've been to that barbecue. And yeah, that was it. exactly. So now, hey Tron, how do we get a hold of the Discovery Channel stuff? Is it still? Available I have no idea. I have no idea. I've never seen it. Had my friends call me up and say, "Oh, you're going mostly." I'm sorry. Did they shelve it so that no one can watch it? I don't it? have a clue. I don't know. The guy who made it lives in New York now. Uh, huh. Vince uh, D. something other. And um, like I said, I've never seen it, but I had my friends call me up over the years. Periodically, they call me up from different places and say, gee, I just saw you on TV. It was great, man. It was great seeing you again. <laughs> you know, people I know that have moved <laughs> to different places. One guy's in Chicago, one's in New Jersey, one's in Florida, you know, and these guys call me up periodically and say, hey, man, I saw you on TV, man. I saw you with that with that crazy ball you used to have in the lab. <laughs> you know, run, <laughs> That's wild. You know? Oh, yeah. did your friend uh, that passed over, did she get to be in the TV show? Uh, passed over. Your psychic oh, friend? Uh, she never, she never participated in the, uh, she never participated with me on, on the contact, uh, I just saw you, um, uh, I, I just saw your, uh, Skype thing say that you went offline, uh, Lorian. I'm trying to get it to come back up. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that Windows, Windows 7 trying to become Windows 10 again. Uh, you I gotta mean, turn it. Everything is trying to make me nuts that's all there is to microsoft it. is trying to get everybody that. online they're trying to get everybody online with this dot net junk and it's yeah, what's, uh, okay now we're going to go away from ufos and aliens for just a moment here in consciousness and whatever else we're taught we're yakking about tonight so what is this whole dot net thing what are you trying to tell me that windows 10 is based in dot net instead of an operating oh yeah system? absolutely or? It's oh, it's no. Microsoft back in '98 came out with something called Windows '98. People may or may not remember that. They got into I a lot remember. of trouble with everybody because what they did is they tried to push that the browser was part was an essential part of the operating system, and they forced. And what they were trying to do at the time is they were trying to wipe a, a, a Netscape out. That's right. And, and, and Safari. Uh, and, well, before Safari. Safari and all those, Golden Compass, Safari, all those came as a result of what happened in 98. Oh, that's what right. What happened that's was. That's right. You're absolutely right. Mark and, uh, uh, Mark and Dressen, I think his first name's Mark. Mark and Dressen was the man who invented what we perceive today as the Internet. He didn't actually invent it. What he does, he, he took the idea of, of a, uh, of an Apple card system and married it with uh, showing pictures and married email together and made a web browser. He made the first web browser and he called it Netscape. And he gave his source code away for free for years. Microsoft came mm -hmm. along, took his source code, open source source code, and turned it into uh, Internet Exploder. And what I call Internet, <laughs> Internet Exploder. And okay, I got you. They and simultaneously with that, uh, he, he Bill Gates integrated Internet Exploder as the file manager in Windows, and That's I right. hated it. I hated it. I hated its format. I didn't like anything about it. I, in fact, I I uninstalled Windows ninety eight because of it. And uh, it turned out a whole bunch of people ended up taking uh, Bill Gates to court over this. Microsoft to court. That's right. And they won. He was, they won. Uh, charged with uh, not racketeering, but a monopoly. He, absolutely, he wasn't monopolizing. Tricks. Well, Bill Gates yep. got smart. He still, he still is, he's still pushing the Windows ninety eight concept. Only he's doing it a different way. What he's doing now is he has come up with a uh, what's called a framework. A framework is a software 
uh, interface that allows programmers to write code that works on a framework, but they don't have to write any of the underlying parts. And it's a right. convenience for programmers, but the, but the but the interface works entirely off the cloud. Excellent. I kind of like that. Well, yeah, you will until something comes along and disrupts the cloud. Oh, that's, yeah. That's the underlying right. concept here. The, if you read if you read what it says in the Bible about the mark of the beast and the number the six six six, this is obviously a prediction uh -huh. of the cloud. Anybody knows anything really? about that? Oh, yeah, the mark of the beast, the 666. A picture of somebody uh, 20,000 years ago, Abraham. He was, a, he, was a Hebrew, he was a Hebrew, not a Jew, a, a Hebrew, and he saw the mark of the beast. He saw a bunch of people sitting around terminals, and all they saw was the Internet uh, numerical octets being shown on their foreheads. He saw millions of people with these numerical numbers on the foreheads, and the one he just happened to see had the mark, which was 666. Well, if you look at Internet octets, which is the underlying structure of the Transmission Control Internet Protocol, Transmission Control Protocol, TCP IP in other words, which is what makes the Internet work in packets and the little data packets, email, everything works on TCP IP. The octets were based on the Digital Equipment Corp's uh, octal computer, the largest number that could be represented in, uh, in a single digit in, in, a, in a deck computer was zero through seven. And so all the octets are made in groups of three numbers going from zero to seven octal. And if just picture a guy sitting there and he's and all he sees, all the sage sees is a, a string of numbers and just a set of numbers. He sees one that comes out as 666. Well, it turns out 666 is a valid Internet address on the Internet. Oh, Here's a guy okay. that's seeing something 20,000 years in the future. This is before motors, before electricity, before uh, mechanical devices. The, the only thing that they had that was mechanical in that time period was a wheel. They take a, a, a branch from a straight branch from a tree and stick two round planks on it, and they stick a cart, and that's called, that, was called a, that was called a machine. That was the sum total of their machines in that time period. He's seeing computers connected to the Internet by millions of people. They're doing all their shopping, their banking, they're uh, getting their groceries. Not exactly what it says in the Bible about the mark of the beast. Woe be unto him when the mark of the beast if, with the 666 on their foreheads. Only those with the 666 on their foreheads will be able to do banking and shopping. And he, That's exactly People looking, staring at computers, that's what the banks, everybody's trying to go strictly 100% on the cloud, what they call the cloud today. Yeah. Well, you don't really want to do that because computers never forget. Uh, the, give you an example of what I mean by this. Uh, the other day, I went into a pet smart and I bought some, I bought some, uh, some pet food. For, I'm feeding feral cats in my yard now. I really am not supposed to admit that because in some parts of California, it's illegal to feed feral cats. Uh, you know, the c politicians, they haven't got enough of our money. They're telling us how to feed our, feed our little you know, fur-faced friends. Uh, those I skunks. know. Can you believe it? Those I skunks. Know. Okay. Yeah, they so want to trap them and yeah. kill them. <laughs> they want to trap, yeah. the, trap and kill the little kitties now. Uh, that's what they want to do here in Los Angeles. Those skunks. Oh. Okay, so oh, don't you, I went don't into you a pet smart. On that. I bought some pet food in there. I come home and I'm watching TV, and all of a sudden I got five pet smart ads on my TV set. Then I get up and I uh, go over to the computer and I did some uh, looking around at some particular integrated circuits for a gadget I'm building. And five minutes later, I'm seeing ads from that company on my TV set. Now, how is that possible? Well, today, television is a totally digitally switched network attached to computers. They can identify, because we're using Google on the Internet, they're tracking us and selling that information to channel partners who are interconnected by computers. Uh, PetSmart, 
you take your little uh, big brother card that you swipe through. Supposedly you're getting a, a deal by swiping your card through. Only thing that does is it tracks who you are and what you're buying, and they sell that profile information to their channel partners. And then you go over to XYZ and buy a flower pot, and you use your credit card over there, and they sell that information to their channel partners, who then sells that information to channel partners. And then you come home, and you're watching ads pertaining to those items, all interconnected, seemingly unrelated. But here's the oh, problem no, they with are that. Related. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely they're related. Yeah, people don't understand. It's absolutely instantaneous how fast it happens. It's well, we're talking instantaneous home, right now. Program. I'm talking on the Internet right now through TCP IP packets, and it's fast enough that we can have a real-time conversation over the Internet. That's pretty fast. Absolutely. That's computers talking to that computers is. that fast. Audio yep, speed. And people don't get that. So, hey, Tron, guess what? I'm actually online and I'm on Skype. So, we're going to take a break here in about 30 seconds. And, oh, actually, right now, we're going to take a break. And, folks, stay with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about UFOs and aliens after the break, I promise you. So. You're locked into Inception Radio Network, Superior, Wisconsin. <laughs> Don't have a computer? Is your internet connection down? Don't worry. Use your trusty cell phone or landline and call into our listen line at 401-283-6700 to listen to the Inception Radio Network 24-7. Again, that call-in number is 401-283-6700. For the Inception Radio Network, I am MJ. Are you a fan of Inception Radio Network? Do you reckon it's the best alternative talk radio station on the planet? Well, if you do, head to facebook.com forward slash Inception Radio Network and like the page. Tell your friends, spread the word, and keep listening to the best. Hello, IRN listeners. This is MJ saying hello and sharing an awesome secret I discovered. It's called DreamNuage.com. Fresh, raw, organic ingredients are used to create all their products. They are made in very small batches to ensure quality and freshness. Handmade in the USA, each product is created with care and with the finest organic ingredients. There are no preservatives, dyes, or chemicals in any product. Stop by Dream Nuage and relax. That's D-R-E-A-M-N-U-A-G-E dot com. Simple, raw, organic. Hello, I'm Pat Ustert, inviting you to tune in to Epic Voyages every Monday evening at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on Inception Radio Network. To find out more about Epic and how you can become a member, visit epicvoyagers.com. Epic is Extraordinary Phenomena Investigations Council the forum for scholars, experts, and those fascinated by and involved in the study of ancient civilizations, conspiracies, cryptozoology, ETs, and UFOs, fringe science, the paranormal, and all manner of extraordinary phenomena. Please join EPIC as we examine the mysteries of the world and beyond on EpicVoyagers.com. And for updates on the upcoming interactive video presentations, the latest news and discussion on the EPIC forum, as well as research, investigations, and membership opportunities, Epic Voyage's program schedule is on the Inception Radio Network. Thank you for joining us. Howdy, this is Joe Mars. I'm inviting you to tune in to Epic Voyages, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday nights, right here on Inception Radio Network. To find out more about Epic and how you can become a member, Visit epicvoyagers.com. That's E P I C V O Y A G E R S.com. 
Hello, everyone. Lorian Fenton here, host of the California MUFON radio show, asking if you'd like special access to exclusive and amazing information about UFOs, the paranormal, and all things unexplained. If you're nodding yes, then join IRN's Insider Club. As an Insider Club member, you'll get an all-access pass to premier Inception Radio Network content for only $4.99 a month. This includes live UFO and paranormal conferences, live streaming UFO sky watches, exclusive IRN radio and TV productions, and of course, paying radio with MJ and Ken Storch. So don't wait any longer. Visit InceptionRadioNetwork.com and click on Member Login to join IRN's Insider Club and get your VIP access today. Welcome back, everyone, to the California MUFON Radio Show. I'm your host, Lorian Fenton. I hope you can hear me well now. Boy, that was a struggle, you guys. I've never seen my computer do this to me before. It just decided it was going to take an hour to update and, and reset itself and get back online. How funny is that? Good old Windows. Ah, oh, glad that's over. Okay. Well, now, Plutronus and I were talking earlier about all kinds of crazy stuff, and now that I'm online, I'm in the chat room, so what I'd like to do tonight, if those of you in the chat room would like to do this, in the last half hour of the show tonight, I want you guys to ask Tron questions about anything, and um, what I wanted to talk to Tron about a little bit more in this um, last, my half hour of the show, before we get to yours at the end of the show tonight, um, I would really like to ask Tron a little bit about what he feels is going on with angels and aliens. And because that's been my conundrum lately, Tron, and I know that you're into the Cabal or Kabbalah or however they pronounce it, because I'm not good at that. Um, And I'm just having a real struggle between the whole a uh, religious aspect of the consciousness and the whole, uh, gosh, you know, just the whole thing of whether we're all imagining this or, or you know, it's just, I don't know. I'm just having a struggle. So help me out here. <laughs> Hate to put you okay. on the spot, friend. <laughs> well, I, I'm not, I can't say that I'm an expert, first of all, <clears throat> but I have been studying it for a while. And the, I uh, and the, <coughs> notions of angels, uh, people who really don't un- understand angels very much, and I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes here because there are a lot of people out there claiming they know about angels and how they work. Right. And right. you listen to them, and and you have to sort of understand the genesis of where the idea of angels came from. Okay. okay. There's the there's an intellectual person. There's an intellectual perspective and then there's a spiritual perspective the first if you if you're not resonating psychically enough to see angels then the only way you can know about angels is to read about them okay, okay. and the first places that you could read about angels that the general public actually became aware of angels was through the catholic church the catholic church talked about angels oh, they don't now, do it can I- I need to interrupt for just a second. Didn't the Hebrews have angels? Aren't they in the um, in the, uh, the Torah? Aren't they in there? Yes. Aren't they mentioned? Yes. Oh, okay. I was getting to that. Oh, okay, they, go ahead. Virtually everything we know about God or the – and when I say the bases, I'm talking about the skeleton. I'm talking about the root information. Well, okay. we think of most people think of Christianity today. I, 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 this also holds true for the Arabic, for the Arabic world. Oh, okay. Okay, a lot of people don't know that the Arabic world, the Arabs and the and the Jews are the same people. They're the same bloodline. Exactly. Yep. Okay, they all originated. They all originated from the Hebrew tribes. They all yep. spoke the same language. In fact, Arabic and Hebrew. Uh, Many of the words are virtually identical, and many of the, even though they're pronounced differently, they're spelled the same way. Okay, and while Arabic uh, words, the, the Arabic alphabet is dramatically different in terms of the pictoglyphic style from ancient Hebrew, uh, 
you, or at least it is today, when you trace it back, trace it back to the same trunk of the tree, you find that it uses the exactly the same uh, alphabet system, and it all started in Sumer. Okay. It traces right back to Sumer, man, which is where, you know, the seat of humanity. It's where the dragons made us. The dragons in the Gan Eden. We were made by dragons, came here in spaceships 150,000 years ago, and, um, and well, uh, you know. Before, you, before we go on with the dragons that made us 150,000 years ago, what about the civilizations here before them? Were there people here, or Anunnaki, or whatever they want to call well, them before the they... Anunnaki, the Anunnaki are dragons. Okay. Gotcha. They, okay, they were called on Anunnaki before before the deluge, and after the deluge, they were called the Rephim. Same okay. guys. They were just called different names. Apparently, the vast majority of the and, and the civilization that existed here was the reptilian civilization. It wasn't a human civilization. That's what people don't understand. The guys who built the pyramids weren't human. Hmm. They were they were the dragon, the dragon people. Picture 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 reptilians with short tails going to work and driving in their weird little cars and or or their flying <laughs> their amount of flying boats and typing on typewriters and keyboards and and having uh, having human burgers and you know uh, you know. <laughs> oh God, human. It's burgers. an advanced civilization that was based that was they were advanced civilization that were. That were an advanced technical civilization. They were egg layers. Interesting. We, okay. Okay. And the Shikazulu asteroid that hit Earth, that in theory wiped it, wiped out. Uh, you know, it, supposedly, you know, it gets a little screwy in here because we we know we know that we know that the we know that they came here 150 thousand years ago. We also know that that the asteroid hit 63 million years ago. So there's a big difference between those two numbers. We know right. that most of the planets in the cosmos, in the galaxy, would have reptilian life on it because that's, that's the first life form that forms on all these worlds. Planets that are so, that right distance from the sun in what they call the magic distance, the, the growth distance, uh, and the right size made of the right materials, you know, the correct correct amount of materials from light metal suns. Most suns out there in the cosmos are light metal suns. They're not heavy metal suns. There are heavy metal suns, but they're far and few in between, apparently. Uh, but, you know, apparently the grays came from a heavy metal sun. That's why they have that element 115. Uh, or, or I doubt that they developed it. They probably just had rocks that floated. And then their physics was based on the development. You know, so much of what we know about physics today was because of uh, people finding magnetite. Right. Rocks right, that sure. were uh, that were naturally magnetic. Yeah, yeah. And people 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 studied it and started wondering about it. And and then physics evolved from chemistry and and whatnot. And we developed. A propulsion type physics, whereas the Greys found rocks that are floating. They floated in the sure. air instead of using magnetite to guide their development of physics. They found rocks that floated, and they they had a different their their the physics evolved in a different direction. Right? Who knows? I mean, well, this is all wild ass speculation. But ancient yeah. astronaut theorists could it be? Could it possibly be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. That was good. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Yes, my ancient astronaut theorist friend Tron, he knows the answers to this. Okay, all right. Back back to reality. <laughs> okay. Or as that real as real as angel. you and I can get to, right? In the the basics of angels, there are people who actually can see angels. And there are people who only read about them. So there's two different vantage points. Generally speaking, the people who see angels only see one angel. And those people are, I don't know how to put it lightly, according to the Kabbalah, they're unbalanced. Oh, really? Now, why would that be? That doesn't make any sense to me. 
because the only angel, because when you balance, when you're in total balance, you can't see any of the angels. Oh. The angels can't see you. Let me put it that way. The angels can't see you. Balancing, being a balanced person, a fully balanced, spiritually balanced person, means that you're not under the handicraft. You're not under the influence of the angels. Each and every one of us have angels. They're our it's, own personal angels. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. When we're not driving, who's driving the car? Another car, in this case, is our bodies. Until we're fully awake and fully in control of all of our aspects of consciousness, who's driving? Well, that's a darn good question. Well, the angels are driving. That's their okay. job. Their job. They were engineered to be uh, the unconscious, to, to, to make up for the unconscious driver. The unconscious driver is the person who's sitting there, uh, gets up in the morning, he sniffs the socks, oh, well, I guess I can put these on. And why is he getting up? Because he has this urge to go over to his girlfriend's house and have sex, but she won't have sex with him unless he's got a job. Okay? He can't make a, she wants a nest, and, and she doesn't really care who she hooks up with as so long as they got a job <laughs> and can feed <laughs> Can feed the baby. Okay, now you're being a little tough on the whole female tribe over not, here. No, but no, 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 no. It's because this is just as is. It makes two. It takes two to make babies. Well, that's true, and that really is a driving factor on this planet, boy. When I realized that that was a big problem, that everybody was unconsciously trying to just make kids. That, that's oh, exactly boy. right. That's our basic. That's our basic drive. If it wasn't for that basic drive, the only other basic drive we have is to eat. Yes. That's the exactly. only other basic drive. If we didn't have those two basic drives, humans would have become extinct many, many years, eons ago. And you know what? We're not in control of it. I am. I'm in control of mine because I'm losing weight and I'm in control of what I eat and I know what I'm doing. It's all willpower for me. And I've also been very much in touch with the fact that I was never going to have children. And the reason I was never going to have children is because this place is not ready to, for another entity to be brought into it to have to go through all what they put people through. Being here is torture. I mean, at least it has been for me my entire life. And I'm not saying my life has been bad. It has been blessed. I'm a very lucky person, and I'm actually very quite happy. But um, I, went, I don't think it's the right thing to bring another human being onto this planet. I think it's – actually, I think it's a horrible thing to do. <laughs> But that's just me. And see, this is one of the reasons my family doesn't talk to me anymore. Well, <laughs> you know, because... there's a flip side to that. And uh, what there, is that? There are billions and billions and billions, as Carl Sagan used to say, there are billions and billions of beings out there that are evolving from the lower worlds and the, the lower levels of consciousness, and they need some place to incarnate into. And there's hordes of people out there. you got to understand that. All of us start out exactly the same way. It's true. We're all created equal, just like it says in the Bible. Most people think it's because we're all created as humans. Truth of the matter is that we all start out as sea slugs or whatever the hell that the lowest life form is. And we all have been in the spider's web. That's why everybody's afraid of them. We all have that, in, that in, instinctual memory of having been trapped in the spider's web and that big old black or white or gray or whatever the kind of spider is coming down and wrapping us up and sticking its fangs in us and eating us. We all have that memory because we've all been there. We've all experienced those things together individually. <clears throat> but so, eventually Okay. But eventually and you gotta remember that when you when you pop out a couple of pups, they're individuals. They're only related to you physically. They're not related to you spiritually unless, of course, you know, you've had uh, previous lifetime experiences with that person, you know, being your great-grandfather or your, you know, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe your great-great-grandbrother uh, or grandsister, whatever the situation may be. The Back to the angels, the angels are spiritual constructs. They're like programs. 
They're like they're they're literally like a program that runs in background until we become psychic and spiritually advanced enough to be fully awake and stop doing those things that allow those angels to be in charge of us and running us. This is what uh, the devil, for instance, is the archangel Uriel. A lot of people don't know that. That's where the devil is. That's that's the devil uh, that that the Catholic Church focused on. They only focused on one angel. Truth be known, all of the angels are just as just as nasty as Uriel is nasty. What? Wait a minute! I never heard that before. Yeah, that I know. Freaking me they, out. They're all, but they're all nasty in their own way, based on their own influences. Each angel has an area of influence. It's, it's like in astrology. Your, your Mars is your drive and your Venus is your love. And your moon is your emotions. Well, the, the angels operate in different, in different aspects of our consciousness. If you, take a human, if you take the human psyche and lay it down on a piece of paper and cut it up into sections, this piece is emotion, this piece does this, this piece does that, each piece is a different area of our consciousness. There's an angel associated with each of those pieces. And the characteristic of that angel is that piece of the consciousness. In this case, Uriel has to do with, you know, the Saturn restrictions. Uh, uh, structure, doing things in particular ways. Archangel Raphael, by the way, and the, the, all the angels have the uh, Aleph, Aleph Lamed. That's that's how you know it's an angel, because the last two letters of the of the of the archangel's name, Angel, is Aleph Lamed. That means angel. That's that's <clears throat> it's a formula. It's a formula for a being, a psychic being. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, that's very interesting. I can hear you. I hope MJ can. Um, What I was going to ask you really quickly, so you're saying E-L, the last two letters of the name? A-L. It's Aleph Lamed. Okay, gotcha. Angel. Angel. Okay, got it. The Hebrew spelling is different from the Latin spelling. The Latin gotcha. spelling puts an E-L on the end, but it's actually A-L. Aleph, Aleph, which is the first letter of the Aleph Bayat alphabet. And Lamed is the L, for is the spelling for L. Okay, so of these angels, when we become fully balanced, then all of the angels are operating in balance, and we become perfect, literally perfect. And they no longer... Because you're so balanced, you're perfectly in the middle. They can no longer see you, as well as any of the demons or the sub, what they call the sub, the sub angels, which are what people perceive as being demons and critters and all kinds of there's all kinds of things in the spiritual world that you, you do know. Do the aliens? Do our great aliens fall into those categories? Everything that's conscious in the universe has a tree of life. Okay, gotcha. The only there's only one tree of life in the universe, and it's God's tree of life. Okay. The so what tree you're of saying life, is the so, angels don't have a tree of life because they're part of it. That's exactly right. Now here's where okay. it gets tricky. There's only one tree of life in the universe, and it's God's tree of life. Everybody is a reflection of that tree of life. We each have our own tree of life, but it's not our tree of life. It's God's tree of life. But our tree of life is a is a dirty reflection of the of the of the perfect tree of life. Where In other all, words, it's the yin or the yang of God's uh, tree of life. The and yin and the yang. It's not the it's yin not and either the, or. Yeah, it's, it's both together. It's both together. It's it's we are we are we are the unconscious God is what we are. We're like a reflection of God who doesn't know that we're God. And when we become perfect, we res- move into f- perfect resonance with God, and we become literally God. And what's interesting about it is, is we're still individuals. We're still we're still that individual being, but we emerge perfectly with God. It's like the salt doll. You have the salt doll, and you toss the salt doll in the salt and sea. Where did the doll go? Well, well the doll dissolves. Of- into the body of the salt. That's right. Still there, still physical, still exists, 
but you know, in in this particular case, it looks like it's destroyed because it no longer has its form. But with consciousness, we don't lose consciousness in the process. We become super conscious in the process. So that's basically death, is us becoming super conscious. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, you can, you, th- th- there's, there's one thing called vast face and small face consciousness. Small face is where you retain, you choose, you have a choice. You choose to retain your individuality. Now, remember the word indiv- individual means indivisible duality. That's where the word comes from. It's Hebrew. Got everything, it. everything got to do with God is Hebrew, man. It all, and I'm not Jewish. It's not. This has got nothing to do with Jewish. This has got to do with the ancient Hebrews. The Hebrews and the Jews are two different species, two different, two different people. Got it. Okay. Got it. The the Jews, as far as I can tell, the Jews were the children of Abraham, as best as I can tell. I mean, nobody knows for sure that I've been able to t- talk to, and I've talked to dozens, and, and I've studied, and I, I, I've been trying to track this information down myself. I have not yet, I don't have a definitive answer, and, and, and in fact, this is just an opinion, and it may be wrong. I could be to- totally wrong in this, but I believe, I believe that the Jewish people, the Semitic people, were the master, you say, the master race of humans, and that we evolved, everybody descended from them. But the Hebrews were either half dragon or full dragon. I'm not sure. But the Hebrews knew everything. It was the Hebrew sages that made the predictions about the coming of Christ. It was the Hebrew sages that that uh, figured out how to keep the dragons from from eating us uh, in the Passover. It was the Hebrews that invented the first languages that the humans evolved into, Latin and other languages. Uh, everything was Hebrew. And if you want to know about what's going on with God, the real story about God, not what you hear about in the Bible, because it's mostly... It's mostly a you know a, a handbook for how to behave with each other, rather than you know how God. And I you know and I agree with you on that. I've never been a huge Bible fan. I do like the Old Testament for a lot of the stories. Um, I'm not sure about the uh, the final book. What is the what's the final book that everybody talks about? Um, the New Testament. Uh, in the New Testament, is it Revelations or? Oh, I don't know. I yeah, can, I don't either. I don't See, read that's it. How, I, <laughs> that's how bad I'm we are. I'm studying Hebrew so I can read the the Old Testament. I want. I'm trying to go back as far back as I can get before the uh, before the Latin world uh, ch- chopped it all up and put their you know their the politicians put their their marks on it and they put it Satan to make it more human, make the devil look more human. I mean. Uh, Oh God, it's a it's a mishmash. Doesn't mean it's not a great book. It is a great book, or it wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. Oh, exactly. And it means so much to so many people. It's been it's been a wonderful book as far as uh, helping people psychically and spiritually and emotionally. But I want to know what's going on. I don't exactly. want uh, you know. I, yeah. So you really are an ancient ar- archaeologist. <laughs> You are well, one I, of those people, according to the ancient archaeologist people. <laughs> you know. Well, I hear I'm currently studying Sinaitic Hebrew. Wow. The, the, that's the that's the Hebrew before Ezra. That and, is amazing. And it goes back to Sumer. I've I've traced it back to Sumer, and Sumer is the seat of humanity, uh, as far as the uh, mystical perception is concerned. Uh, it so, may not. Now, yes. we got to take a break, and when we get back, I want to talk a little bit more about this, because I have one more question around this, and then we're going to start getting questions from the chat room. So everybody get your questions ready, your observations, and a big shout out to Joanne, and I just want to say hi to everybody else out in the chat room, so come on, get me your questions. We'll be back in just a moment. You're locked into Inception Radio Network, Superior, Wisconsin. <laughs> Don't have a computer? Is your internet connection down? Don't worry. Use your trusty cell phone or landline and call into our listen line at 401-283-6700 to listen to the Inception Radio Network 24-7. Again, that call-in number is... 401-283-6700. 
401-283-6700. For the Inception Radio Network, I am MJ. Hello, IRN listeners. This is MJ saying hello and sharing an awesome secret I discovered. It's called DreamNuage.com. Fresh, raw, organic ingredients are used to create all their products. They are made in very small batches to ensure quality and freshness. Handmade in the USA, each product is created with care and with the finest organic ingredients. There are no preservatives, dyes, or chemicals in any product. Stop by Dream Nuage and relax. That's D-R-E-A-M-N-U-A-G-E dot com. Simple, raw, organic. smartphone if so inception radio network is the best app for you available on itunes android samsung and most other app stores just search inception radio network with the app you can listen live check out podcasts of recent and past shows view our videos see what shows are coming up who the guests are and via the chat room send live questions to those guests you know it makes sense check your app store now inception radio network i'll see you there are you looking for a cure for boredom never worry irn's new interactive website introduces a number of ways to pass time while you listen to your favorite show choose anything from the irn chat lounge the game lounge video lounge or the mood lounge these fun exciting features let you chat in real time with fellow listeners view live sky watches play daily posted online games or pick a show based on topic the choices are endless Use your time wisely, keeping it all on IRN. Hello, everyone. Lorian Fenton here, host of the California MUFON radio show, asking if you'd like special access to exclusive and amazing information about UFOs, the paranormal, and all things unexplained. If you're nodding yes, then join IRN's Insider Club. As an Insider Club member, you'll get an all-access pass to premier Inception Radio Network content for only $4.99 a month. This includes live UFO and paranormal conferences, live streaming UFO sky watches, exclusive IRN radio and TV productions, and of course, paying radio with MJ and Ken Storch. So don't wait any longer. Visit InceptionRadioNetwork.com and click on Member Login to join IRN's Insider Club and get your VIP access today. Hello, I'm Pat Ustert, inviting you to tune in to Epic Voyages every Monday evening at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on Inception Radio Network. To find out more about Epic and how you can become a member, visit epicvoyagers.com. Epic is Extraordinary Phenomena Investigations Council the forum for scholars, experts, and those fascinated by and involved in the study of ancient civilizations, conspiracies, cryptozoology, ETs, and UFOs, fringe science, the paranormal, and all manner of extraordinary phenomena. Please join EPIC as we examine the mysteries of the world and beyond on EpicVoyagers.com. And for updates on the upcoming interactive video presentations, the latest news and discussion on the EPIC forum, as well as research, investigations, and membership opportunities, Epic Voyage's program schedule is on the Inception Radio Network. Thank you for joining us. Howdy, this is Joe Mars. I'm inviting you to tune in to Epic Voyages, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday nights, right here on Inception Radio Network. To find out more about Epic and how you can become a member, Visit epicvoyagers.com. That's E P I C V O Y A G E R S dot com. Welcome back, everyone, to the California MUFON Radio Show. I'm your host, Lorian Fenton, and great to have you all here with me in the last half hour of the show tonight. And I have my good friend Tron with me. And uh, I guess the button didn't get 
closed off during our break here over the last few minutes. And I, we're just sitting here laughing because I'm, I'm sitting here going, what did we say? What did we say? <laughs> So you guys all to know that I was very worried that I was uh, uh, doing something wrong during the break. So, But um, what happened was Tron and I were going over a comment by Joanne Richards. And uh, Tron just basically said something to the effect of uh, that he doesn't think that, that that's what it is. So I thought I'd have him address it anyhow because I was going to after the break as well. So here we are, Tron. This is our first comment for the evening from uh, Joanne. And she says... Joanne. Uh, yeah, I, she said Joanne, that. Look, I'm sorry. I was kind of, I was, I didn't realize I was being overheard. And my reason for saying what I said was because in, when you, when you, there's a hierarchy and the elementals are part of the hierarchy and all that, and, and it's kind of hard to, you know, there's no way to describe it in like two or three minutes. Um, I've spent most, most of my, my entire life in training. I was a member of the Rose, Amark Rosicrucian Order. From the age of four years old until I was in my uh, late 30s, mid 30s, and then I became a member of a secret, uh, um, of a much more secret uh, group, which I am not at liberty to disclose who they are because it's by invitation only. Uh, and these are ascension schools. These are secret mystical ascension schools that teach about how mysticism and God work without the religious aspect. Is this is it's not belief based. It is it is practical. It's not magic. Although what part of God isn't magic? Uh, it teaches it teach these schools teach you how to become more psychic, how to see between the dimensions, how to be awakened yet zero in the astral plane, how to remain awake, how to astral project, uh, you know, and how to deal with things like the elementals, which I have had significant interaction with over the years. Uh, the idea about what you were – so when I was making comments about the elementals here, the non-human species have elementals, everybody has elementals. If, if the elementals are part of the hierarchy, it's a, it's a level of – it's something that's not human or, or, or animal. It's not a physical – it's not a physical being. It's a being that exists in one of the dimensions of consciousness, and everything's made of consciousness. We think of, we think of reality as being a physical reality. Truth be known, there's nothing physical. It's all energy. It's all psychic energy. Everything is psychic energy. Your hand is made entirely of psychic energy. The car out there, which is made of metal, looks like metal, is made entirely of psychic energy. Everything. So um, when you see when you see an elemental, you're seeing what they call the, the elementals are beings that are sort of the uh, basic level of animated consciousness all consciousness is aware but some pieces of consciousness are less aware than other levels of consciousness in reality everything and it's not and you got to understand that everything in the universe is made of the consciousness of god everything and when i say the universe i'm talking about grays reptilians you know uh Anywhere you go in the universe where there is something that's a conscious and alive, it's made of God because God is everything. God is everywhere. And, and it's just us that don't re realize that because we're, we're unawakened gods at this point. Well, and you know, some, and, and I think that's a great explanation about what uh, is going on with the elementals, and I totally believe that. But I, what I find interesting about her comment, though, is that she said these elementals travel with these non-human species, and they're just kind of hanging out with them, and they decide to hang around the outside the ships as orbs. So do you think that's a possibility? I mean, because it kind of Well, I've seen like orbs with my consciousness. Okay, I've so... Tell us what you think the orbs are that travel with the spaceships, because I'm dying to find out. Well, uh, nobody knows. Including oh. Me. Nobody knows. The orbs, what I call orbs, or luminous orbs, because that lots of, there's a lot of confusion about this, and I constantly bring it up. I believe that there are basically... Uh, of.
four categories of oil floating around in the air, and you can only see them at the time you take a photograph. And most of those are not phenomenon, but are actually dust motes. There are also, or those are dust, those are dust orbs. Then there's photo orbs, which are authentic alien phenomenon, in my opinion. Uh, you can communicate with them telepathically, and they're only seen in photographs. Then there are luminous orbs, which are the little balls about their you know, range in size, about the size from a dime up to about four feet in diameter. The largest that's ever been reported is about four feet. Uh, those are the ones that uh, I believe uh, Joanne's talking about that travel with the flying saucers. Uh, there are multiple reports of, but most orbs, by the way, are typically about the size of a uh, cantaloupe in size. These are the ones I have seen with my eyes and in daylight. I saw it with my eyes in daylight, but I also saw it psychically in yet zero. I was looking at it in two dimensions simultaneously. And that's because I've been trained by the by the mystical organizations to be conscious in yet zero. In fact, most psychics, this is why all psychics are aware of aliens and and the and the flying saucers, because they can see them operating in yet zero. We, we know that they bilocate because we see them out there projecting. And when you're psychic enough and you can see into yet zero, and, and, and believe me, there are millions and millions and millions of people who can't see in the astral plane. They can't see anything. So they can't, don't, they're only seeing a few flying saucers. They see the ones that are fully materialized in the physical world, in the ASEA. And all and the psychics see them in both in both dimensions. They see them both in the ASEA, which is the physical plane where we are, where our, our hands and bodies are located, and then the yet zero plane, which is the astral plane, where people see the dead people and the elementals and what have you. These that these people see them all the time in that dimension. The psychics do. But there are many reports of cantaloupe sized Lumus orbs ejecting out of flying saucers. Right. Yes, they do seem okay. Now, here's where it gets tricky because it is my opinion that the flying saucers uh, are quasi physical. Well, I, I, that's not quite right. I, I believe that they are a psionic civilization, I believe that they have ev evolved the next level of physics, which I agree. is. Which is the application, the engineered application of spirituality, it has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with God because everything is made of God. Just like you take a drill motor with a drill bit and you drill a piece of wood, you're you're engineering God's mind right there. You're taking a drill bit and you're and you're augering out wood particles out of a piece of wood. Well, that piece of wood's made entirely of God, and mankind has invented these tools to engineer wood using metal drill bits, that's engineering God's mind. That's a form of engineering of God's mind. Well, that's a, that's a low-level form of physics. And the more advanced level of physics is where you learn how to directly manipulate what we perceive as magic and uh, spells to bring about uh, magical kinds of operations that are done with machines. That's psionics, and I believe that the alien spacecraft are psionically based. This is, I think, the basis of how the reptilians use us, that they're harvesting us for our psychic energy, and they use it to power their civilization. We're their oil fields, just like in the Matrix. Just Instead like in the Instead of being that battery. <laughs> yep. And we're... Just as clueless about what's going on because it's beyond our perception space. But anyway, the Loomis Arms, there are many reports. I actually have some radar uh, 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 data. I have radar data which came from the East German military radar uh, systems showing uh, there show a large number of of, of Loomis orbs, cantaloupe-sized balls emitting out of flying saucers on military radar. So, wow. yes, there is some kind. And when you look at them psychically, you can clearly see that they're quasi-physical. They're, they're like mecha. They're psionic mecha. They're not quite mechanical, and they're not quite spiritual. It's like it's, it's, it's artificial consciousness, sort of. Or maybe it's a or I, I don't know. I don't know what they are. I wish I knew. I, I struggle with this all the time. And I've seen them up close and I've I've spent 
20 years studying Loomis orbs. I've built contact experiments. I've interacted with them. I've, I've, I've hired uh, psychics to, uh, as used them, I used a, a remote viewer as a psychic beacon, like a strobe light. You hang a light outside to attract the bugs so you can <laughs> collect bugs. Well, I hung a remote viewer out there and used her like a light bulb to attract the flying saucers and Loomis orbs to my platform, and it worked great. It worked oh absolutely great. Yeah, and see, that's the trick, isn't it, though? I mean, this goes way back to what we started talking about at the very beginning of the show, the whole thing about it all being consciousness and that we can create and call them in and see them or not see them, and it's all up to us individually, but also as a reflection of God, correct? Yes. You know, I mean, I think you've answered my whole conundrum for the week. <laughs> So really, it comes down to the fact that I'm just uh, touching God probably a little bit more than the rest of my family or the people that I deal with it on a regular basis. And because of that, I'm a, just a little more uh, sensi sensitive to my surroundings, maybe. Maybe that's what's going on with me lately. What do you think? Don't know. <laughs> oh, don't my know. God. You, you aren't going to venture a guess. Okay. Well, when you have your weeks of like uh, weeks or days or hours of, of doubt that you wanted to have anything to do with any of this anymore, what, do you, what gets you out of it? Well, I don't go through those anymore. Oh, God. Thank God. When I do get down... Yeah, when this, this is very personal, so if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have when to. I I'm do just doing it down, because I like it, like to. When I do get down, or anytime I have some kind of a problem that, that I have difficulty with, um, I use the science of mind um, uh, tri tribation, which is um, I leave it up to God to solve the problems for me. I oh, put it in wow. God's hand. It's called right action. Just I just ask God for right action. I don't I don't I don't want to be a part of the process of trying to figure it out. Just say just God help me uh, in the in the process of right action. I leave it up to you, right or wrong. I leave it up to you, and that seems to help uh, with me. And then also I also chant the Hebrew uh, awakening spell, which is Ani Yud Hey Vav Hey, Ani and Ani. and yeah. all you have to do is uh repeat it it's a it is a hebrew spell uh that it's a formula for bringing about resonance with god and it's simply ani which is hebrew for i am and yod he vav he which is in the bible yehovah but it's the actual spelling of god's name it's a yod he vav he and vav you'd spell it as v a H V Vav and He is H E Y or H A Y. The spelling in Hebrew is H E H in Latin. But it's just Aleph Nun Yod, which is Ani, I am, Yod He Vav He. And you just repeat it over and over and over. Ani Yod He Vav He, Ani Yod He Vav He. And while you're doing that, visualize in your sun center, in your heart, um, that being that's most dear to you, you know, whether it's Jesus. I like to use Jesus because, you know, he's a beautiful person, beautiful human being. And he was a master, he was a master, you know, Hebrew, uh, based entirely his whole life was about love and, you know, being doing right by people and, and animals. And so anyway, if you uh, ascribe to uh, Kuan Yin, then it's Kuan Yin. If you ascribe to Allah, then use Allah. If you're ascribed to... Uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> and then whatever, whatever, whatever turns your clock, man. Picture okay. that being in your sun center, in your sun center, and just repeat: Ani Yod He Vav He, Ani Yod He Vav He. Most people have trouble with one or two of the letters in the Hebrew, and my teacher, uh, Daniel Feldman. He's actually not a teacher, but I accepted him as my teacher, even though he doesn't take students. Um, I recognize him as my, my teacher. Uh, he taught me uh, via his book and having taught, chatted with him on occasion that when you have trouble with certain letters of the Hebrew of, of God's name, it's because you, you're not resonating. 
you're not resonating correctly yet. There's no right or wrong way to pronounce it. There's only your way. And when you when you resonate more fully with the oneself, then the correct pronunciation becomes more correct. The resonance itself causes the correct pronunciation. So when you start oh. having troubles with certain letters, it's because your 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 consciousness is is resisting it. Probably you're, probably one of your one of your angels is resisting it because it you know it it doesn't it doesn't want you to start driving. It wants to continue driving. When you start driving, they don't get their power anymore. They don't, they're you know they're no longer in the driver's seat, and they want to continue to drive. Well, that's so, intriguing. As you move, oh well, yeah, the angels resist us. You know they're. Individually, well, the angels are no good. <laughs> they're bad guys. Well, see, when they're now, all in perfect balance, they're me. beautiful. But don't be afraid. They're part of you. They're, well, they're no, you. I understand that. But what? Uh, why did they come and take me to the place of love and all that if they weren't trying to show me something really good? Well, uh, all that means is you are balanced between two angels. Oh. And the two angels you are balanced between were the love angels. Oh, okay. But that doesn't mean that you're balanced between all four. But, but well, actually, I think there's uh, ten of them, ten major yeah. archangels, and the rest are unnamed. They're unnamed, but they're temporary angels, according to Ari Kaplan of the Sefirot Zira. If you want to read a good book, read uh, read the Sefirot Zira by um, Ari Kaplan. But you have to be you have to be dedicated to studying the Kabbalah to to read it because it's strictly 100 percent a training book. Um, I gotcha. Okay, but. Um, so you just repeat Ani, Yod Hey Vav Hey. Uh, get yourself some some counting beads like the Catholics use, and okay. each each time you do a repetition, increase it by one bead. There's 144 beads in a loop, and the average counting beads, uh, and, you, and repeat it. Uh, I do this whenever I'm sitting on the can, or <laughs> I'm. Uh, Boy, that was way too much information for me. Driving go to ahead. A, <laughs> driving to work. <laughs> Okay. Driving to work, sitting on a can. Anytime you're doing something, you're, you're sitting around with nothing to do. Instead of just daydreaming, repeat, chant, chant the wake up spell. Cool. Chant the, it does three things. One, it decrystallizes your karmic conditions, which is good. That way, you don't have to actually live through those nasty experiences. Two, and you don't repeat them. Two. It uh, helps you to add, the more you decrystallize your karmic conditions, the more you move into resonance with the oneself. And in the process of doing that, the more conscious you become. Now, don't focus on the psychic stuff. The only place it works is here. And it's a distraction. Focus on awakening. Focus on getting to be a better person, a better conscious being. The less karmic conditions you have, the less times you have to reincarnate back into this stinky hell world we live in. Boy, At, isn't that the truth? I just, you know, I say to the, this is a, a common mantra of me since I was 13 years old that I did not want to come back here again. Honest to God, I really don't. And if this is the key, if this is to help me to get my way out, then I'm going to be doing those beads every day. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it works. It, and, you know, Daniel, ta Daniel has pointed this out, that there are other ways to awaken faster but those ways are have dangerous things associated with them. And believe me, you, you can get into serious psychic trouble if you do things uh, rapidly. You, you, the, simply doing the Ani yod He vav He is safe. It's safe. It's subtle. It seems slow, but it, is, is pro it, it progresses you uh, in a safe, orderly manner. And trust me. And nothing's more beautiful to get to the top of the mountain and you're not sweating and you're not pulling arrows out of your butt and you haven't got a whole bunch of entities, you know, gnawing at your toenails because you took the fast route. <laughs> you know, right, you right. You took the fast route, but you had to deal with some some with some of the natives on the way. Well, uh, let me, you, you know, that you invited. Brings, yeah, we have one last uh, time for one last question of you, and I'm going to ask. So these dragons that created us, where do they play into us getting off this planet um, into the next dimension without you know, getting unscathed? I mean, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to hold us back? I guess that's my real question here. They keep most of us here in the reincarnation trap. They're the devil. 
Okay, so you think there is a reincarnation trap. I'm starting oh, to Oh, without realize, a question of a doubt. Yeah, no I'm question. starting to realize there's something really it's to that story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in I, the Matrix, when when the battery when when the when the body became old, they flushed it down the can. Well, that's only part of the story. The Matrix isn't the fact that you're you're the battery sitting in those little bathtubs with all the hoses ha attached to you. What they do, what what the what the reptilians do is they flush you down the can because that's what happens. Our bodies get so decrepit and we we pass away, and then the natural. And you gotta understand, there's a natural universe at work. God is everywhere. God uh, does not interfere in, in human affairs or in animal affairs or reptilian affairs. What does happen is when our bodies become so decrepit, naturally we pass away. Our, we, 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 our consciousness moves entirely into yet zero. Right. And that's, that's where people see the dead people, the deceased people. They're in yet zero. That's where ghosts are seen in yet zero. And the soul moves up through the dimensions. It goes up from yet zero into Bria and then finally into absolute. It moves into full resonance with God for a time. And then the, the souls are rayed back down due to karmic conditions, back down into physical form and reincarnate again. This is the, and, and, but the reptilians are constantly influencing us to cause us to, ca to generate karma. Karma causes us to reincarnate. And so long as we're in the physical form, they have access to us, to our energy fields. They keep us clueless about the spiritual world. They want us to remain clueless. They, they, for many years, they operated through the, through the religions on earth. They keep us angry, they keep us in wars, they keep us uh, nail-biting, they keep us, uh, uh, you know, fighting and shooting each other and stealing from each other. They influence us to harm each other, which generates karma, which keeps us coming back to the reincarnation trap, which is life, physical life. This is just one train stop. There's a whole bunch of train stops to the top of the mountain, guys, and we're stuck on one train stop here. And the reptilians yeah. are the guys that are they're, they're 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 operating the train station. They're keeping us here at this train station because they got access to our energy here, and they keep us stupid. They keep us psychically stupid. This is why mysticism has been kept secret from humanity for centuries. And this is a real conspiracy. Most conspiracies are, are made up in people's minds. But right. the mystical conspiracy is a real, honest-to-goodness conspiracy. And I, the, the two most prevalent forms of religion on earth, both of them deny the existence of reincarnation. And both of them, both of them teach that Allah or Muhammad or Jesus is responsible for our sins. We're responsible for our sins. And sins we are. And, and speaking of sins, we have to end the show. So I hope everybody got that last comment. We are responsible Ani for our sins. Ani yod vav hey. Just repeat it over and over and over. Ani yod hey vav hey. Okay. Yod as in code. C-O-D-E. It's Y-O-D. Ani yod hey vav hey. If you want to spice it up a little bit, add ahava on the end. It means I am God love. Ani yod hey vav hey ahava. Ani yod hey vav hey ahava. Repeat it when okay. you get down. Repeat it when you're driving. Repeat it when you're talking to your mama. Ani yod hey vav hey ahava. <laughs> <laughs> 